Glass Onion, Knives Out 2, whatever you want to call it, I just saw it last night and I have a lot of things I want to go over. I love the first Knives Out and I have to admit, going into this one, I was pretty skeptical as to how Ryan Johnson would make a sequel that could match the original. So did this second chapter live up to the first? Let's get right into that in this review. In standard review format, I'll start with positives, then move on to negatives, then I'll end with my conclusion and rating. Glass Onion is a very fun movie. The film does plenty of things well, and the most obvious of them is the comedy. The movie is funny. It has that dry humor the first had that loves to play on the archetypes of its characters. In Glass Onion, you have gags like the dumb blonde and the douchey jock that are utilized to their full potential, along with having Benoit Blanc to complement it all. The movie is funny, although I will say some moments, especially during the beginning for me, felt forced. But after that first 30 minutes, the comedy felt much more natural. The movie also loves to play off celebrities and the rich, and it makes them the butt of many jokes, and this works given the film feels like a commentary on the bourgeoisie. I can definitely see some people holding this movie to be funnier than the first, but the fact that it even gives the first a run for its money is super impressive because the original Knives Out was hilarious. I think the first Knives Out is wittier, and it has more layered jokes, pun, whereas the volume of jokes in the second is definitely higher than the first, but both are hilarious. The next positive I want to talk about is how beautiful this film is to look at. Glass Onion has so much color, and it makes use out of its giant, extravagant location to provide a visually unique film. There's no crazy shots or specific sequences that wow you, but the film makes use of its beautiful sets. The movie overall looks extremely lavish and grand, which is exactly what it's going for. The next positive I'll mention is also obvious, and that is the acting. There are no performances that really blow you away, and sometimes the acting may feel over the top, but it's supposed to be that way. The characters are purposely exaggerated because they are meant to be a satire of their real-life snobby counterparts. It's nice to see Edward Norton in a movie again, and although as a person, he may have done some questionable things, I love him as an actor, and he gives a solid performance. The only performance in this film that really stands out is Daniel Craig as Benoit Blanc, because his take on the character is just so unique and charming, but it may seem standard to us because we are used to his character from the first movie. But don't let that fool you, because Daniel Craig gives another great performance as the lead in this film. The acting overall is good. It's nothing crazy to write home about, but the cast does a good job at playing their characters and making them out to be the archetypes they're supposed to be. The last positive I'll mention about this film is the structure. The film is extremely close to the first in terms of structure, and personally, I love that. The movie will show you a series of events, then go over those events again, but with different perspectives or motivations that clear things up and help to add layers to the conflicts present in the plot. This tracing back of events, then retelling them with slight variations to give different takeaways, was seen in the first Knives Out, and Glass Onion follows in these exact footsteps. I personally love this structure and how it makes use of flashbacks. I understand some people might think of it as spoon-feeding the plot to the audience, but honestly, I don't mind. I love the retracing of events to add different elements to the same scenarios, and this is probably my favorite aspect of this film. It's right up there with the comedy. Now let's move on to the negatives, and honestly, nothing sticks out to me as super wrong or poorly done. There is only one aspect that I left the theater thinking that was an oversight, and that's the ending. I'm going to go into spoilers here, but if you haven't seen the movie, I'll leave a timestamp up on the screen so you can skip to my rating and conclusion about Glass Onion. So what's wrong with Glass Onion's ending? Well, the scene where Helen Brand convinces the others to suddenly revolt against Miles makes no sense. Birdie joining in first makes sense, because she's the dumbest in the group, so she doesn't realize that revolting against her lead investor is bad for her. But then the others join in and seem to forget how all of their livelihoods rest on this man. 
It's an extremely off-putting change of heart that makes no sense the further you look at it. Clear with a K is clearly doomed and Miles is going down because his energy source just burned the Mona Lisa. But why are the others happy? When we see the rich friends that leech off of Miles, it seems like they're happy at the end of the movie when in reality, all of them are screwed. They are going to lose their lead investor and out him as a murderer and then confess to perjury in the process? If they all testify to seeing the original note getting burned as they unanimously say they will at the end of the movie, then it's going to bite them in the ass because they'll all be found guilty of lying in the original trial with Cassandra Brand, which is a serious crime known as perjury. So with that said, I don't get why they all seem to be so happy at the end of the movie. It seems like a major oversight that forgets about the basics of the judicial system. But with all that said, that's my only real complaint about this film. There's some other aspects you could bring up, like how this film falls to some very typical Hollywood tropes in some areas, but it's nothing that really bugs me as much as the ending issue that I just addressed. So with that out of the way, let's dive into my rating for this movie and how it stacks up to the original. I'll be honest, I still prefer the first Knives Out. The characters feel more fleshed out, the plot feels more carefully written, and the balance of flashback to current storytelling feels better. Glass Onion has a lot of the same positives going for it, but it doesn't do anything better in my opinion, except for maybe the comedy, but the humor is clearly a matter of personal taste. Glass Onion is definitely a worthy sequel, but it's no Dark Knight or Empire Strikes Back. It follows the footsteps of the original and gives some new twists, but nothing outwardly exceeds the first Knives Out. Glass Onion is an extremely fun movie that seems to tie everything up and serve it on a golden platter. Some may find the movie to be obvious or lacking depth in terms of meaning, but this movie is clearly not meant to be a philosophical detective movie like Memories of Murder or Seven. Glass Onion does an extremely good job at accomplishing what it sets out to achieve, and that is the fun adventure of linking clues. So on to my rating. On my scale of 1 to 4, I would give Glass Onion a very solid 3. It's an extremely fun movie, but for my scale to get in the 3.5 to 4 range, you have to have depth and meaning. Glass Onion is a movie about classism, but it doesn't delve in as deep as other classism films, like Parasite or Jean Renoir's The Rules of the Game. But like I mentioned before, the movie clearly isn't trying to compete against the films of this caliber. Glass Onion is meant to be a fun ride that you can enjoy without needing to whip out your magnifying lens to read in between the lines to find a deep commentary. This movie is super fun, and you owe it to yourself to watch it not as a cinematic masterpiece, but as a damn good time. That's all I have for this video. Please let me know your thoughts over Glass Onion in the comments below. These videos take a long time to make, and I'm a one-man band over here, so all the support you guys provide really means a lot to me. And if you made it this far, thank you, I love you, and I genuinely hope that you have a great rest of your day.